All right, hey guys, Dr. Susie G here. And I wanted to create this video to explain why we wanna keep our, our lids on when we have pelvic pain or any type of pain for that matter. And I owe a lot of credit to a recent course that I took, um, which was called Yoga for Resiliency and Trauma Recovery um, by the gals at Sacred Roots Wellness. So thank you so much for filling my brain with this wisdom so I can share to all of my peeps. <laughs> so this hand model I drew here is what we're gonna be going off of. And this is, has been adapted from um, Dr. Dan Siegel, who is a psychiatrist who really works on trauma and how the brain responds. And he actually came up with this really wonderful hand model. And so it comes as a handy uh, model to use so you can remember. Okay, so let's start there first. Let's understand the levels of the brain and how they work in terms of what happens when we experience a traumatic event or any event that causes you to feel hopeless or helpless. And we know in the case of pelvic pain or any pain for that matter that persists for a very long time, it can really drag us down and make us feel hopeless and helpless. So I'm going to go over the levels of the brain and then we're going to wrap it up with how does this relate to pelvic pain and what you can do to help um, keep the all these systems in line and in balance. So first let's look at your hand. So if you take your hand um, and follow along with me. So this is the spinal cord or the rest of your body. Let's pretend this part of the brain and the nervous system is the brain stem, which is more of the survival mode, gas pedal, pedal to the metal, fight or flight, um, primitive reflex, so actually really um, automatic to help keep you in survival mode. Great, when you're running away from mountain lion. Um, the thumb area is the amygdala, so a part of the brain that kind of sits deep within the brain. So if you put your thumb inside the palm like that, that would be the amygdala cradling some of these deeper structures. And the amygdala is, uh, releases stress signals when you're feeling threatened and also is responsible for memory and learning. So um, keep that in mind. And inside of your palm is actually the limbic system. And the limbic system is the emotional brain and it's responsible for fear and pleasure. Again, a lot of these systems are put into place for survival um, and they b become very automatic uh, for some. Um, hippocampus, the files are memory, the hippocampus is here, um, sorry, in the, in the pinky side right over here. And that is also for memory, files of memories away and increases, um, amplifies stress hormones in our body when we need it. Again, when we're feeling threat, either a direct threat or a perceived threat. And then your fingertips up here are, are called part of the cognitive brain or the outer part of the brain that is the neocortex. And that is responsible for self-regulation, higher level of functioning, discerning whether or not something is dangerous or safe. Um, and it also helps with rationalization and logical thinking. So how do all these parts play when we experience something that's uh, traumatic or um, stressful in our lives, right? And this depends and it, it actually varies from person to person depending on your coping mechanisms and um, what you've been taught since you were a kid and what social and cultural uh, influences play into this as well. So just keep that in mind as you know some of these structures are, are, are primitive and evolutionary, but they are learned a lot of the times and the trails that we create in our brain and the deep grooves of our mind um, are adaptable and there's a term called neuroplasticity or bioplasticity where things change and adapt to the repetitive sensory stimulus or the environment um, in order to for the better good of you and the organism in terms of survival. So when we're in pain and we have no answers, such as with pelvic pain, and it's also a taboo subject. You can't walk around showing your genitals to people saying, hey, this you know, hurts, like you know, my hand hurts, can you check it out? So we often feel isolated, we feel alone, and we feel hopeless and helpless, especially when we go to healthcare providers that um, are trying to do their best to help us, but um, ultimately we still find ourselves in pain. 
which can be really frustrating. So that adds to the whole picture of whether or not, so if we take our brain, you know, a little hand model to demonstrate the brain, if our brain, it has its lid on or off. So when we're under stress, when there's something that's threatening us, when we're scared and we don't know what to do and we feel a sense of loss of control, we tend to flip our lid. So the neocortex, the part of the brain, these fingers that are responsible for recognizing whether something is dangerous or safe, conscious thinking, logical reasoning, um, decision making, you know, all those higher functioning parts that keep everything down here under control, so to speak, um, those are no longer helping us. So we flip our lid and we tend to use the parts of the brain that are more so in terms of an automatic gas pedal, switch the light on, fight or flight, which increases anxiety, depression, um, and ultimately creates trails, sort of like a hiking trail. The more we use these parts of our brain to um, cope with stress, to cope with challenges in our lives, um, the more automatic it will be and and the less rational we can be about what's happening in our body and our world. So we're tending to be in this freak out mode for a very long time. And that in itself sensitizes the pain response. It increases and amplifies the sensitivity of the pain response. So with pain, it's really important to keep your lid on. And there are certain things that you can do that will help keep your lid on. And the first one is actually understanding why you hurt so you can hurt less. The more you know about your body, the more you know about how it works, the more you know that pain is, is not forever and that things do get better and you can have a really great life, you know, that puts hope back on the table and you work with somebody that can help you, give you strategies and things to do to help you become independent in terms of managing what's happening. So you really, you're, you're feeling more empowered and in control. And when you're feeling more in control, your lid is back on, right? So what happens though over time, so the more we experience pain over time, the more we create trails that are more efficient. So again, these higher areas of our brain are no longer kind of communicating as well with the, the lower parts of our brain that are more automatic. So those parts of our brain become really um, strong and efficient at doing their job. Again, which is put into place to protect you as a survival mechanism. Okay, so what does that mean? You get more guarding in, um, in your body, which means you might feel tense, you might have increased pelvic floor tension, right? So that tightness, that gripping feeling that you might feel, you might have changes in your bowels and your bladder function, you might have digestive issues that come along because we know it's stress that can change your digestive system, either to be too fast or too slow. You can also experience sleep issues, right? So how many of us who have pain or stress in our lives or emotional or physical pain have difficulty sleeping because we feel like our mind can't shut off, right? We have monkey mind, right? I'm sure you guys all heard that. So all of these, all of these things I'm describing to you are it's, it's trying to simplify a very complex interdependent system um, that is our ecosystem in our body, in our mind, and our brain and our body. And so we need to understand how these systems work together so that you can start to put strategies into place that will help you become more resilient, more efficient, and self-regulated um, in your everyday life, right? So um, that's what we mean by you know keeping your lid on. And so what can you do to keep your lid on, right? There are things like breathing exercises, right? Taking a deep breath in and out and doing that throughout the day. You can do things like movement, gentle movement, so restorative yoga, tai chi, qigong, anything that's going to help you tap back inside to get that sense of control. Because when we are feeling out of control and we're feeling hopeless and helpless and down in the dumps, the last thing you wanna do is check inside. You really want to alternate and change your external environment as much as possible to make everything that's bad in your life go away. And, and that's not possible uh, most of the time. And so often we'll have to change what's happening inside to start changing the way things perceive to us on the outside. So, and that can be really hard. I get it that, that I've done, I've been through that and that can be really hard to check in. 
but it is an, an crucial part of recovery when we're dealing with pain is, is checking in once in a while and um, knowing what your baseline is and what your edges are and what your triggers are because only then with that awareness you can start to change things and create new trails. New trails that are more uh, positively adaptive and nourishing for your health and your well-being. Okay. Um, and then the third thing you can do, um, so we talked about breathing, we talked about great movement and safe touch, gentle touch. You know, you don't have to treat pain with more pain. That is a total myth. And I would, I would stay far away from that. You know, um, do, do things that make you feel good. Okay. Do, uh, practice touch, safe touch that makes you feel good and warm inside and safe because if you're not feeling safe and something is hurt, hurting you and something is creating this increased tension in your life, whether that's, you know, work, whether that's school, whether that's, you know, family, whether that's friends, whether that's food, I mean, anything can be, um, a quote unquote threat or danger in our world. And again, it's sitting down and thinking about, Hmm, what are those things in my life that are causing me to flip my lid and what can we do to start creating more safety? Do we have to take away some things? Do we have to perhaps react differently to what's happening in our environment if we can't take ourselves out of a situation? How do we work around that? So this is my brief explanation of something I learned over uh, the past weekend and I hope it's helpful for you as you're navigating through your own situation in your life with pain. So thanks for listening and um, I'll talk to you guys later.